Universal Orlando Resort proudly presents Storytime with the Grinch. Um, Universal Orlando Resort proudly presents Storytime with the Grinch. <clears throat> That's your cue. You know what, Mr. Offscreen Narrator? I've had a very long day, okay? And I am not some trained dog that you can just beckon any time you want me to perform for you. Oh, look at me. I'm the narrator. And I think I can tell anybody what to do just because I've got a creamy voice like hope pudding. You want a story? <laughs> tell it yourself. <sighs> very well. How the Grinch Stole Christmas Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. Stop! It could be. Stop! Stop it! Who do you think you are? You think you're qualified to tell my story? Well, yes. <laughs> I'll show you something. Oh, yeah. That, that. Perfect. The story is called How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Not how the off-screen narrator with the silky voice stole Christmas. My story, my voice. Got it? Whatever you say, Grinch. Darn tootin'. The Grinch cleared his throat. <clears throat> I was, I was just, just about, about to, to do, do that, that <gasps> he said. How are you doing this? The Grinch frighteningly asked. He paused. Then he confessed something embarrassing. I sing Christmas carols in the shower all year long. The Grinch leaned over and retrieved the book from the table. That's better. How the Grinch, that's me, stole Christmas. <sighs> Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas. The whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. <laughs> where was I? I know where you are. Well, of course you know where I am. I'm standing right here. No, I mean... I know where you are in the story. Oh, really? Yes. Well, who asked you? But you just No, fine! Fine! Where am I, smarty pants? The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. I knew that. Of course you did. <sighs> it could be. His head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it only was. Yeah. But, whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm-lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. 
and they're hanging their stockings. He snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. <gasps> it's practically here. Break time. I'm going to practice my sneer. Check this out. Sneer! Oh, oh, oh dare you! <laughs> Are you quite finished? Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise! Noise, noise, noise! That's the one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise! This is somehow your fault. Relax, Grinchy. You got this. Do your breathing exercises. And you stuck the landing. Then the Who's young and old would sit down for a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast! Oh, off-screen narrator! Yes? I'm hungry. Feed me. Excuse me? Snack time! Me hungry! Well, I can see what I have around here. I was just about to prepare a stew. I could... Perfect! Perfect! Don't skimp on the motor oil. <laughs> they would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which is something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the who's would start singing. And they'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing! And the more the Grinch thought of this whole Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why? For 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Ew. I really can't stand that, you know? Singing? Like, get real. Huh? But luckily, the hero of this story, a la me, is about to have a wonderful, awful idea. And then, the Grinch got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do! The Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick! <laughs> With this coat and this hat, oh, just like Saint Nick! All I need is a reindeer, the Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. <laughs> Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said. If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. <laughs> oh, and a boy, Max! <laughs> then. He loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down towards the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their towns. All the windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care when he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one! The old Grinchy Claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. 
Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue. Hey, hey! Do you have anything for my throat? All this reading and all? Tell you what, if you finish the story, I'll treat you to a moose juice at Seuss Landing. Ooh, how accommodating. Where the little hoose stockings all hung in a row, these stockings, he grinned, are the first thing to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. It's getting good. Then he slunk to the icebox. He, he took the hoose feast. <laughs> he took the hoof pudding, he took the roast beast, he cleaned out that icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch, he even took their last can of hoo hash. <laughs> I did take it. And no, I'm not sorry. Not even a little sorry? Don't make me sneer at you. Huh. Oh no, please, anything but that. <sighs> Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I'll stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus! Ah! Santa Claus? Why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? Have you been here the whole time? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Ho, ho, ho! Why, my sweet little dot, the big Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it ho, 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 home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. Hey. Excuse me. And he spit bold the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. Now pat her on the head. Okay. Gently. That'll be all, Cindy Lou Who. That was awkward, right? <laughs> and when Cindy Lou Who. went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went to the chimney himself, the old liar. On the walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. <laughs> it was a quarter past dawn, or the who's still a bed, or the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, the tinsels, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip-top to dump it. A poo-poo to the who's. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> he was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. The mouths will hang open for a minute or two. Then all the Who's down in Whoville will all cry, Boo Hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low and started to grow. <laughs> I wonder what happens next. <gasps> but the sound... But the sound was sad and everyone was sad and slightly mad and they all went home the end oh grinch you know that's not the end of the story yes it is i said the end everyone knows the story is over when you say the end even children know that but it's not over Fine. The Grinch reluctantly turned back, sat down, opened up the book, and continued reading. I'm literally doing it. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook what he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came, somehow or other, it came just the same, and the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours, till his puzzler was sore, and the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. Then the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. He brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. The End I need a minute, okay? Look, maybe I was a little bit harsh before. Um, I... we're still live. Don't believe everything you read, kids. Just because my heart grew a teensy-weensy little bit does not mean that I am a softy. Nope. <laughs> you want to come to me for emotion? You are barking up the wrong tree! <gasps> Max! Ha <laughs> ha Of course, Max. Let's go play. We can play Pop the Boil. And that, my friends, is the story of how the Grinch stole Christmas. Excuse me! I've got this. Go right ahead.
And that, my friends, is how I stole Christmas. <sighs> the Grinch exited triumphantly. I am literally doing it! We're celebrating at Universal Orlando Resort from November 12th to January 1st. <laughs>